how can we eat more than we're supposed to? No one can exert willpower over a biochemical drive that goes on every minute of every day of every year. Why are we eating more? What happened to make us eat more? We had this exquisite system, very sensitive system called leptin, that allowed us to modulate our total food intake for 50,000 years or more. And then all of a sudden, in 30 years, the thing's broken seemingly beyond repair. How can we eat more than we're supposed to? And the answer lies in understanding the biochemistry of the brain, because clearly those signals are not working. So one signal is the starvation signal, which is clearly not working, and that's leptin. And leptin tells your brain you've had enough and you can burn energy properly. But when you don't get the leptin signal, your brain thinks it's starving. The second way is in the reward system. So there's an area of your brain called the reward center. The scientific name is the nucleus accumbens. And it is the site where dopamine works. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter and it conveys the feeling of pleasure. And pleasure, for lack of a better word, is good. Except that a lot of pleasure, as it turns out, is not. In the process of going for more pleasure, we have changed our dopamine system. And one of the keys to addiction is the idea that after stimulating that system chronically again and again and again, and it takes three weeks to do this, what happens is that the receptors for the dopamine signal now downregulate. Now there are fewer of them. We know that the brains of people with obesity do respond differently to food. In that reward center, when they see palatable food, some parts of the brain light up a lot, that wanting part. But the liking part, once they taste the food, it's blunted. It's not that they're getting more pleasure and reward, they're getting less. That's like living with an urge that you can't satisfy. And so people think that this hyper-reward condition or this inability to experience the same level of reward from the same foods that other people are getting is causing people to overeat in order to get that dopamine that they're missing. You have to eat more to get the same effect. And that phenomenon is called tolerance. And then when you pull the chemicals that cause the pleasure away, now there's no dopamine and fewer receptors, and that gives you symptoms of withdrawal. So tolerance and withdrawal are the hallmarks of addiction. We know that this occurs with nicotine. That's why we have tobacco addiction. We know this occurs with alcohol. We know this occurs with cocaine, morphine, cannabis. It occurs with every single drug of abuse. And it occurs with sugar, too. And that's relatively new data that has come out in, say, the last five years, which shows that sugar specifically downregulates the same factors, the same receptors in that nucleus accumbens, in the reward center, as does all of these other addictive, abusive compounds. Addiction's a strong word, but it might be a really helpful word to push us to recognize the power of certain food on the brain. There is some evidence that becoming obese does change and blunt that reward system. So we do know that overexposure to McDonald's can cause those brain changes. So food can be just like a drug to certain people 
who have a certain disposition to addiction. Is it that becoming obese has changed their brain chemistry, or is it that they were born with this predisposition and that caused them to become obese? It's very likely that it's a little of each. No one chooses obesity. Obesity chooses them. You think anyone goes out and says, you know, I think I'll go out and be obese today. There is physiology, there is biochemistry underlying every single behavior. Sleeping behavior, eating behavior, sexual behavior, drinking behavior are all hormonally driven. What we call behavior is not behavior at all. It's the cognitive inhibition on that biochemical drive. And the question is, how long do you think you can exert a cognitive inhibition on a biochemical drive that's going 24-7, 365, getting worse every single day that you don't perform it? No one can exert cognitive inhibition, willpower, over a biochemical drive that goes on every minute of every day of every year. It's just not possible. We think that developing compulsive eating and maybe food addiction reflects some real changes in the wiring of our brain. And that's a scary thought, that becoming obese has changed us forever.